Are you in the market for your first hardware synthesizer? If the answer is yes, then this video is for you. In front of me is the Arturia Mini Freak Algorithmic Polyphonic Synthesizer. Why is this synth the one to go for? Let's get into it. Especially today, there's a lot of synthesizers on the market, both from analog to digital to hybrid and all that stuff. And this is technically a hybrid synthesizer. So the reason why I'm just focusing on the Mini Freak in this video is because there's just too much out there to really do a, an exhaustive list. So instead of confusing you, I think it's best to just go straight to the point as to why this synth I think is the perfect entry point for someone looking to get into hardware synths. Also, you could be a seasoned professional and looking to get away from plugins in the computer and want to have a hardware synth. I think the Mini Freak nails it. Point number one, why I think the synth is the perfect starter is the fun factor. Again, there's a lot of options on the market and they all range from really fun to a little tedious. Getting a synth that really like piques your interest and makes your creativity spark, I think is really important to have a good experience with your first synthesizer. And the Mini Freak has it in spades because it's traditional, but also relatively groundbreaking at the same time. The oscillators, for instance, are algorithmic oscillators. And what that means is they're essentially little programs inside the synth. Your fun factor is exponential because you have all these different varieties of potential sound that you can generate with just these oscillators by themselves. By the way, if you're really, really new and you don't know what an oscillator is, it's basically where the sound starts in the synth. So the Mini Freak has fun in spades. Uh, the keys are the mini style, so that can actually be a pro or a con depending on the type of person you are. The interface is laid out really well to give you hands-on experience with the tools of the synth. Here's the filter. Right here we have two touch strips and they're multi-purpose. So for instance, they can be the pitch bend and modulation wheel, or they can be macro one and two, or they can be gate length and spice for the arpeggiator or sequence, which uh, is really fun. So for instance, in this patch, I'll hold a B flat chord and adjust the, the macro strips. So the obvious pro of a hardware synthesizer is you get hands-on control. Because if this was a plug-in in a computer, you'd have to mouse over to each one or map each one, each knob to a button on the screen. And that can be a time-consuming process for some pieces of software. Building patches is also really fun in this. So if you just hold this white button right here, the preset is initialized. And then with the type button right here, you can go through different oscillators. One of my faves is this saw X right here. So I just made a quick little patch. There's no effects on there yet. What I'm gonna do is go over to the sequence and show you how fun the sequencer can be. So I'm gonna drop an octave here and I'm gonna hit record right there. Now what's great about the sequencer is you can put in chords. So we could start with say C octave uh, and then a little minor thing. I'm just gonna. And as you can see, it's showing you which step it's on. And it will go up to 16 right now because that's how uh, many steps I have. You can you can actually adjust it to 64 if you want. But for the sake of this, we are going to keep it simple. Now. Fun factor. Let's slow it down. Now 
Now, I will not be able to go over every feature in this video because the video would be an hour plus long. And I don't want to do that. So I'm going to try to keep this moving. The second point why I think this is the go-to synth for a first hardware synthesizer purchase is price. So it's 600 US dollars, which is not cheap by any means, but it's cheap in comparison to other hardware synthesizers that you could purchase. The value that you get is actually pretty great. Uh, it also comes with a VST version as well. So not only do you get the hardware version, but you also get a plug-in version that you can put into your DAW. So Logic Pro or Ableton or something like that. You can actually have this synth as a plug-in inside there and they will connect and talk to each other, which is really great and relatively innovative and new uh, for modern day synthesizers. So I kind of think it's the future actually. There's a few other synths out there that are in that price range, like the the Hydrosynth Explorer is $600 and it's also mini keys. Like I said, there is options out there, but for 600 bucks, this is actually a pretty sweet spot considering that you get a hybrid synth, MIDI controller, VST plugin, all that stuff. So essentially what I'm saying is the price is good. By the way, if you do plan on purchasing this synth at any point, using our affiliate links helps out the channel greatly and we prefer Zounds. So if you do plan on picking it up, uh, going with Zounds is really great. We've used their no credit payment plans for years as well. So it's our go-to choice. Highly recommend using Zounds and using our affiliate links helps out the channel. If you're buying a MIDI controller by itself with some decent features, you're probably looking at about 200 bucks anyways. So if you consider the price of a MIDI controller plus the hybrid synthesizer and the VST plugin, this actually ends up being a really great value. My third point actually dovetails with that second point of price in that this is actually a really great MIDI controller. I've used this quite a bit with Ableton uh, just to trigger like say pigments or, um, or track sounds and all that. It's got a decent aftertouch to it which personally I think is important. If you don't know what aftertouch is, by the way, it's when you press the key and then you press into it, and lean into it, it'll actually uh, express different sounds or modulation specifically. Uh, some keyboards are good, some are bad <laughs> um, because some of them just feel like they're on and off switches, which I, I really don't like. Um, I prefer aftertouch keys to have a little bit of push and give to them to have a, some expression. And these tend to have a uh, decent aftertouch. So as a MIDI controller, you have plenty of knobs to be able to map certain parameters to whatever plugin you're using. So it just gets the job done and works out really well. Fourth point as to why you should buy this synth as your first is the build quality is excellent. This should last a while. Now, again, it's only been out for a few months and I've had mine for about three months. So I haven't gigged with it specifically, and I haven't uh, run it through the mud, <laughs> obviously, because you can see it's in excellent shape. The construction feels solid, so I wouldn't be worried about it in the long run. And honestly, if you were to pick this up secondhand, it would probably maintain its value relatively well over time. Fifth reason why I think this is the synth is learning synthesis and patch creation on this is actually really fun and easy. As you can see, what I did with this quick patch right here, it is, uh, it's fast and easy. And if you like a sound in a preset, you can just tweak it easily on the, uh, on the panel. There's a lot of hidden features underneath things and that can sometimes put people off uh, because you know, you might have to dig a bit further. In fact, one thing that I personally don't like that you have to dig into a menu for is um, velocity to VCA level. So how hard you hit the key is velocity and you can send that modulation to the envelope uh, which would control the volume essentially and there's no knob on here that directly controls that you have to actually go into the menu so if you go sound edit right here and then scroll down to envelope then velocity to vca is what you'd have to adjust right there so i click on that and then i just crank this up so now i can do like gentle Yeah, overall, it's a really fun synth to patch. The modulation matrix can be a little confusing uh, with the way you send things. And also, if you want to um, if you want to modulate an LFO amount based on another modulation source, it can be a little confusing how you have to get into the matrix and do that stuff. But if you learn it on this, then you're going to be really prepared to approach other synthesizers, which I think that's like the main thing is it if you start with a synth that's fun to program, those skills will transfer to other synthesizers. The other thing too is that the Mini Freak has enough complexity to keep you satisfied for patch creation, 
but also isn't too complex because a first synth that has just, you know, six LFOs and six envelopes and all these generators and stuff like that can be really overwhelming for someone that just doesn't know what is going on with that stuff. So the fact that you just, you know, you got your LFOs here, you got an envelope, a, you know, cycling envelope and all that, and they can kind of do dual duties type of thing, that gets you started and starts making you think about synthesis in a way that is very approachable. It's got just the right amount, in my opinion. And another factor as well to make things really feel good from a synthesis point of view is it has digital effects. And they're good digital effects. And three of them specifically. Because a lot of synths will be like, well, you have your delay and your reverb. And like, that's kind of it. This has three effect slots that have a lot of variety to it from choruses, flangers, phasers, you know, obviously reverbs and all that. And distortion and like, bit crusher type of stuff that can really create some nice angry type of sounds that you might want to try to make in a synth. So really good stuff right there. Point number six that I would like to make about the Mini Freak is that it can grow with your skill set. If you pick up the synth and then learn it in and out and then decide to move on to the synthesizers, this will still be an excellent synthesizer for your production needs. You can still get great use out of it from a professional music production point of view. And also, because it has the VST portion of it, so you have a plug-in version, uh, you will be able to have a lot of sonic capability in your studio, uh, whether or not you're a beginner or fully advanced pro. So I think it's probably one of the best synths to just grow with over time. And on top of that, I'm sure Arturi is working on more algorithms for the oscillators. So the potential for it to grow is only going to uh, expand over time, both with the VST and also the hardware version. By the way, if you're enjoying this content, a like and subscribe would go a long way and I would truly appreciate it. This channel, if you haven't noticed, is brand new. My wife and I have been running Tefty and Memes YouTube channel and it's been great, but we decided that it's time to make a channel that is dedicated towards music production, information, technology type of stuff. So that's what this channel is. And if you want to get on the train now, it would be amazing for you to hit the sub button, but only subscribe if you're actually interested in this type of content. So thank you. So finally, you might be wondering what about the Micro Freak? Because you have the Mini Freak and it's 600 bucks. Then you have the Micro Freak, which is... $349 new. In my humble opinion, the Mini Freak is absolutely the way to go, especially for a first synth. The Micro Freak is awesome. I own one, I've used it a lot, and it's a very fun synthesizer, but it is extremely limited, and I think it lacks a lot of the fun factor that exists for the Mini Freak. For one, the keyboard, while it's interesting, uh, the PCB keyboard on the Micro Freak, while it's interesting, it is not something that you're going to want to learn keys or really enjoy the synth making process or the patch creation process on there. I recommend against it. It's a really fun synth, but not as your first main synthesizer. The other thing is there's no effects on there. So everything is dry. You'd have to hook it into a DAW or hook up pedals to it uh, to give it some sort of effects. And I really think that delay, reverb and some other stuff, uh, digital effects and all that actually make a huge difference for your first impressions for the way a synthesizer can feel. It's also considered a paraphonic synthesizer. It has four oscillators specifically, but all four of those oscillators are shared between the filter and the envelope and all that stuff. So again, much more limited. Uh, the sequencer is really cool. I've used the sequencer quite a bit on there. So yeah, in comparison, $600 versus a $350, you're getting much more value for your money by going the full $600. You, you know, you get a MIDI controller, uh, you get an amazing polyphonic algorithmic synthesizer, and you also get the VST version as well. Whereas with the Micro Freak, you know, like I said, it's just four voice paraphonic. There's no effects. It's a mono output. Uh, it does have a wavetable oscillator in there, which the Mini Freak does not. But in my opinion, the Mini Freak already excels really well at, um, wavetable-y type of sounds with some of the oscillator types that are already baked into the box already. Something I haven't even mentioned on this is there's two of these oscillators per voice. So, uh, and you can actually play it as paraphonic as well to make it 12 voices total. Again, I can't go into all the details on the synth because the video is gonna be way too long, but it's just way more flexibility inside this box. And some really cool kind of like 
hidden features, not really hidden, but kind of hidden, is the second oscillator can act as a processor to the first oscillator. So again, think of these as programs. The first program can be like a little mini synthesizer, and then the second program can take the audio of the mini synthesizer and put it into the second program, do some processing, and then treat it as a full subtractive synthesis inside the mini free. So really cool. I think that about covers all the points I wanted to make about why this is a go-to first synthesizer. Hopefully you found this information useful. If you're looking for more content about the Mini Freak specifically, I do have some videos planned, some instructional videos. If you wanna have a deep dive into how to actually make a patch on this synthesizer, that will be a video soon. So definitely stay tuned and subscribe for that. But that's the video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.